Hi guys, and welcome to this first video on section 6.2 of paper 3. In this video, we will start taking a look at a case study of transboundary pollution. So transboundary pollution is a pollution that originates in one country, but is able to cause damage in another country. So it crosses an international border. Now, uh, technically, for those of you that are living in Hong Kong, um, Hong Kong and China, not transboundary pollution, because this is not counted as an international boundary. So technically, you can't use that case study. But of course, anybody living in, China, in, in Hong Kong which is part of China, does understand that we can sometimes get transboundary pollution crossing from the mainland over to the territory or special administrative region. So one of the problems is that pollution, um, transboundary pollution, can carry pollution from heavy emitters and then it deposits somewhere else. It's very hard actually to control this. It's easier uh, within a trading bloc, for example, the European Union, where there might be some commonality of laws between the two countries and a system of being able to control this. But in general, transboundary pollution is very, very difficult to control. So we'll take a look at this video from the Wall Street Journal, which looks at Southeast Asia and the haze that it's experiencing. Drone footage from Greenpeace shows the cause of the haze that's choking Southeast Asia. For weeks, hazardous air spread across parts of Indonesia, Malaysia, and Singapore. In a rare instance, it has even reached cities in Vietnam. A large source of the fire comes from Indonesian peatlands. Because peatlands contain twice as much carbon as regular forests, more greenhouse gas is emitted. Here's why. Untouched peatlands are dense, waterlogged forests that are normally fire resistant. However, after two decades of peatland clearance by the plantation sector, they've turned parts of Indonesia into a giant matchbox. When peatlands are drained for plantation, carbon is released into the atmosphere as CO2 emissions. The problem is compounded when peat soil catches fire. The fire can smother away below the surface become extremely difficult to put out, hence causing longer fires and longer periods of haze. Greenpeace's analysis showed that more than 40% of Indonesian's fire hotspots this year were on peatlands. Okay, so just to um, break down what is happening there. So you've got the um, peatlands, Peat is like uh, waterlogged soil. Peatland being um, cleared by plantation owners. And when they're cleared, you get a double whammy. The process of clearing them causes the peatland to dry out. And that releases carbon dioxide directly, uh, directly into the atmosphere. And in addition to that process, you also have fires. Now, a lot of these fires are actually started deliberately to clear the vegetation to enable the plantation to, to take place. The problem is that once these peatlands, which have a high which have a high organic carbon content in the form of dead vegetation, once they dry out, um, they are very, very easy to catch fire. And once they caught fire, um, it's very difficult to put them out because the fires can go deep, deep down into the ground. And it's almost impossible to put them out. Also, these fires are very, very smoky and very, very dirty because they tend to burn at lower temperatures, which means that you get a particularly large amount of smoke being produced. And anybody in the last couple of years in the, in the uh, peat burning season, in the farming burning season, who have been to places like Singapore, will have experienced this and it's quite substantial. Um, those of us living in Hong Kong, it does um, make Hong Kong pollution look comparatively minor, what they're experiencing in areas like Singapore. So breaking this down, they did talk about the smoke and the haze there in that video. Um, but in addition to that, we've got acid rain. And acid rain 
um, can be both uh, acid deposition can both be dry. That's directly uh, in this case the the uh, ash from the fire or emissions from uh, factories. It can be dry or it can be wet acid deposition. Either way. These, uh, this acid deposition is very damaging for the environment. Now both wet and dry deposition and the haze that you saw in the previous video carried by the wind, sometimes over very, very long uh, distances. Now because it's a transboundary example of pollution, it's actually very, very difficult to control and most certainly has caused some diplomatic stress which is understandable between the source country and the country receiving the pollution. So it's very difficult to sort out. It's very damaging uh, as I said to those diplomatic relations as well as damaging to the environment and people's health. So acid rain has a number of uh, effects. Um, acid rain obviously affects the pH of the soil and that causes a soil degradation. We've already seen in the freshwater unit uh, the importance of soil uh, chemistry and the effect when you start changing the soil chemistry, in particular changing the soil pH, it changes the structure of the soil, it changes the amount of nutrients the soil can hold and there are some plants that require a specific pH uh, the pH also affects the microbes and the microflora and fauna in the soil, which are an absolutely vital part of the nutrient cycle. So in addition to that, you've got uh, the macro and microflora and fauna being affected by the soil, and you've got the structure of the soil being affected. And this means the soil is potentially a lot more prone to soil erosion. So that's directly in changing the soil structure and composition of the soil. Um, it is more prone to erosion. And also if you start affecting the vegetation and reducing the vegetation, then you're going to have less uh, vegetation holding the soil together. So again, um, here you can see a double whammy. So there you can see that we've got damage to trees and vegetation colour. Um, that is because directly it, pH changes the soil, changes, acid rain changes the pH of the soil and that makes it hard for plants to absorb the nutrients they need. You've got the direct deposition and directly the effect of the, pH of the uh, acid deposition on the leaves of the plant. That also causes a plant problem. Um, it reduces the resistance of the plants to disease. So they may not directly die from the lack of nutrients or the acid deposition, but they will become more vulnerable to disease. Uh, with acid, wet, acid rain, um, in particular um, aluminum in the soil, um, that can be caused to be leached out of the soil and that can be taken up by plants. So metals like aluminum, at high concentrations are actually toxic to plants and they're also uh, those minerals are also toxic to the aquatic life as well so you can see a whole cascade of reactions going on here uh, changing the pH causing the chemical composition of the soil to change and then that poisoning going on to poison the soil <laughs> So you can see as well as the direct effects on the plants, we also have effect or an effect on the aquatic life forms. Um, if you start changing the pH, particularly low pH, it means that the eggs of most fish, freshwater fish, and uh, microflora and fauna are affected. So this will seriously compromise the biodiversity of the stream. And for those of you that have done any um, coursework where you looked at pollution levels in the stream, pH is definitely one of those ones that you would want to be recording in fresh water. Now acid rain doesn't have a direct impl 
direct effect on the health of humans. Um, but again, the dry deposition in the air can affect human health. It can affect your breathing. Children and the elderly are particularly susceptible to this. Um, many people that live in Asian cities um, will, will have experienced headaches and irritation of the no nose, ear and throat. So again, we got this acidification of surface waters uh, that has a significant effect and it's creating this dead zone in our freshwater systems. So some lakes in, uh, in areas that are affected by um, acidification uh, actually have dead zones, but those lakes cannot afford, support any form of aquatic life. The last one here on the list is uh, corrosive effects. Um, so the increased dry acid deposition and wet acid deposition on buildings um, can have a corrosive effect because of the pH, particularly if the building or statue is made out of limestone. Okay guys, I hope you found this video useful for unit 6.2, which looks at the environmental effects. And the next video is going to go on to looking at the reduce, ways to reduce the effects of acid deposition.